Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Mod Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at something very unique and that is tethers, power and fuel, which are these lovely things all around me. So this is a mod that feels very inspired from Satisfactory where we can create power cables galore absolutely everywhere linking grids all together, static grids, dynamic grids, your ships, your other bases all together into one single power grid. And this is achieved by placing these blocks into the world, coming up to them, pressing them, and then moving a cable over to a corresponding block, which will then power up your other grid, which is fantastic stuff. Absolutely incredible stuff that it works like this. Yes, that's what we're going to look at today. So with this mod pack, it is in very early access, so we can only do a few things. Currently, we can only transfer power from grids to grids, and there's only four current blocks. Our first block over here is our pylon block, which we simply slap down, and then we can walk up to it, we can left mouse, and we'll get a little wire to connect over to some places. Of course, you cannot connect yourself to the same grid, because that'd be a bit silly, wouldn't it? And you do get some funny messages when trying to connect your lines up to these same blocks, where you say, gonna try and blow a fuse, you'll blow us up, you can't do that, and so on and so forth. Yes, we can just right click that, and it goes away. We get a nice pylon, it looks very similar to the antenna block, but we've got an interesting part right here, which is where we're going to connect our cable. If I come down to here, the second block is the charging station, where we have a block that looks very similar to the programmable block, but we just come around to the back, and we have another access point right here, where we can click it, and pull a wire across. There we go. Moving over to here, this is our power sockets. Unfortunately, they all come out of one area, but you can connect up to four cables with this thing. It's a button panel with simply four access points on there where we can click it, and once again, a wire can come out. And then our last block is the pylon, which is going to be used as an extension block in order to get your cables where they need to go. So we can use this cable to say connect over to another pylon, which can then be used to connect over to another pylon, and that can be used to charge up a ship. Of course, that's being charged by a single battery, so it looks kind of silly in comparison to the size of the ship, but that is what it does. This one over here, unfortunately, will only be a single connection, so if we connected that over to here, and then we try to connect this over to there, it's not going to work. It's just going to show up red, and so that won't work. Yes, what we're going to do is have a bit of fun with this and show off what we can do with it. So all the pylon blocks have a simple control setup. There is no way to access a control panel from it. If you go up to it, left mouse click, you're going to get a wire. If you go up to it and right mouse button, we're going to cancel any connections. If I connected this block over to here, like so, and then come back over to it and right mouse, we're going to disconnect that wire. So what we're going to do is just connect up to the grids and show you how it transfers the power. So we've got all these little pylons set up on this grid, and we've now got two batteries over here. Opening up the battery number two, we've got a current output of one watt. So we're going to connect this pylon over to my separate grid over here. So connecting that all together, this is now going to switch on, and we can access our medical bay, and of course the survival kit over there. We come across and find battery number two, we can see our output is now 8.62 kilowatts. So we've gone up with that. And if we want to connect, say, over to there, we can now place another pylon, a pillar, or something else like so. Let's go with a power socket this time. So we're going to grab a power socket, and now we're going to link that all the way over to this grid over here, which has got a bunch of spotlights, a refinery, and an assembler. The spotlights have now switched on. And now coming over to here and finding battery number two, we can see our output has now gone up even further, as if we're all on one single grid. And speaking of single block grids, if you were to copy and paste this, we'll see that everything is connected thanks to those wires. So it does behave like a single grid, so if you did make a big base with lots of wires connecting everything, you can simply copy and paste it and move it to a different location. But there are some limitations with these cables. When it comes to a static grid, so these blocks are placed here on the ground, we can have our cables go up to 100 meters, so that's quite a long length to connect everything together. But when it comes to a dynamic grid, which is going to be a land vehicle, or anything that moves, such as a ship, we can only go 20 meters. So if we're coming down for a quick little recharge and need to snap our wires together, we will need to make sure we are pretty damn close. So if I was to come over to this pylon here and try to connect it over to here, 
We're not going to be allowed it, we're going to get a warning message that says we're too far away and we'll need to bring the ship much closer. But what I can do is bring it over to this pylon. This pylon is a static grid and then we can move over to here which is much closer and now we're connected to everything together and our ships can now charge. And these wires can go through pretty much everything so there's no risk of it ever colliding with stuff or being blocked. If I was to come over to this block right here and say just remove the connection and then we're going to encase this one like so, let's just build some blocks in front of it. I think that'll do. We're nice and covered up now. There's no way that is going to get damaged from random gunfire. Just come around the back here and then connect it up like so. We'll just safely go through that block and yes, it'll click through. But I think I pretty much covered everything. It's still in early development. It's still in testing phases. It's not too good on a multiplayer server. So if you are going to use this, try to stick to the single player because the performance is a hell of a lot more stabler. The blocks themselves are dirt cheap, requiring only one display, computer, construction component and steel plate. And that's for all of them. And they can only be put on a, a large block grid. Yes, it's an absolute fantastic thing. I've been playing around with this for a while. I'm still waiting to see if there's any kind of performance implication for when it comes to a large spread out base. But it does mean you can make a power substation completely far away from your base and connect it up with these wires which makes it nice if you're trying to go for a much more simplistic look with your base. Have the horrible generators, your solar panel arrays and all that somewhere behind a mountain and then just lead the wires all the way back to a nice quaint base and you'll get all the benefits of it. But that is it for the Tether mod. It's an absolute fantastic mod to play around with and like I said there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to play around with it yourself and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.